Hello, good evening, and welcome to your most authoritative business and economic analysis program live here on TV3. This is Business Focus. Uh, on this platform, we discuss everything that concerns your business and more. My name is Park Sari. Tonight, we discuss two very critical issues, our pa power sector as well as the very latest development on our oil find. Later on the show, we'll go for the mover segment where we tell you what young entrepreneurs are doing as they contribute to the growth of the economy and also give you updates on the stock market as well as the commodities market. The very latest on that with Winslow Sakifu. Uh, he'll join us with the very latest on that. But first, let's go for news making headlines in the world of business. All right, you're welcome back to Business Focus, your most authoritative business and economic analysis program live here on TV3. Before we zoom into our discussions uh, this evening, let's go for some tips on taking risk as a startup business. All right, so you're welcome back to the show. My name is Park Yasari. This is Business Focus, your most authoritative business analysis program live here on TV3. Uh, let's start off with the oil sector. And on Thursday, February 14, uh, 2019, the Ministry of Finance in a press release sent from Oslo, Norway, uh, confirmed Aka Energy a uh, significant offshore resource base in Ghana and that Aka uh, has committed to scale up new developments in the deep water tunnel Cape Three Point block. Now, the statement also said that Aka's announcement was the biggest oil find in Africa of 450 to 550 million barrels with potential recoverable reserves of nearly 1 billion barrels. Now, at today's oil price of $65 per barrel, that field is worth at least $30 billion. So today we ask, what are all these figures and what do they mean to our oil sector? And also we discuss concerns of the, this costing the country some $7.2 billion. Uh, my guests have joined me in the studio. Uh, I'm going to introduce to them pretty shortly. But of course, I mean, we're told by the energy minister, deputy energy minister, Mohamed Amin Adams, that this oil find is, is, is worth uh, half a million barrels of oil, uh, crude oil a day. And this is far less than what Nigeria and Angola is producing. They are producing in excess of one million barrels a day. So what does this mean for our country? Uh, let me just quickly introduce my guest to you. Kojo Poku is an energy analyst. Um, he's an energy expert and also research analyst with the Institute of Energy Securities, Migdat Mohamed. Thank you very much, gen gentlemen, for your time and good to have you in studio. Now, ahead of this discussion, uh, we know that Imani Ghana has raised a number of concerns um, over the announcement uh, of uh, Aka Energy uh, having won this uh, 
oil find. Uh, with uh, now some of the questions, let me just run through some of the questions Imani has been raising. For instance, now, uh, and I'm going to quote here. They said that it would appear we may not be exacting the maximum interest from this significant find. Now, GNPC may have sold Ghana short by allowing ACA to assume from the start that these new oil discoveries automatically fall under the existing uh, petroleum agreement, which is erroneous. At least Ghana could have exercised its right to take up uh, the 10% additional equity option in the ACA block. Now, the failure or refusal or negligence to do this is uh, truly startling for a, development, for a developing nation which needs to make the most of its natural resources. Uh, they raise a number of concerns, including um, how many discoveries were made by Hess and which discoveries were appraised and when were these appraisals uh, when were these appraisal periods? So they've raised a number of concerns and a number of questions they're posing to the energy ministry. Uh, we made attempts to reach the energy ministry. I spoke to the uh, head of communications for the energy ministry, Nana Damwa. He says he's going to come back with uh, to us on this. Uh, there are a number of checks that he needs to make uh, before he can speak. Uh, uh, you know, confidently on this matter. We also tried to speak to Franklin Kujo, who is with Imani Ghana. He, uh, at the time we reached him, he was in a meeting and has promised to get back to us. Uh, I'll start off with Kujo. Kujo, so what do you make of all this uh, back and forth, uh, this latest, uh, you know, issue Imani is raising about ACA? Well, um, I don't see the point. I think Imani should come again and clarify what they are trying to say exactly. Look, in an upstream business, what government there is difference between carried interest, which is as per the petroleum agreement, there is a percentage in the block which government of Ghana takes, which is the up to 14%, which you don't pay any contribution in that equity. So government of Ghana has 14% in the block and all the expenditure that is accrued in the work program, government of Ghana doesn't pay anything. It is called the carried interest. Anytime you want to go above that, then you have to now pay as per your percentage. So Imani is saying that Ghana could have gone up 30%. Aka can give Ghana government another 15%. It doesn't matter. What it means is that if we are going to do a 1 billion work program, government of Ghana has to cop up $150 million, 15% of 1 billion. So it is not a carried interest. It's only when you are looking for freebies Outside the 14 to 15 percent, anything else comes with payment. It's cash calls. So I don't get where ACA is trying to go. We've always known that government doesn't you risk mean Imani. money. Sorry, Imani is mm. trying to go. I, we, we, don't, we don't encourage government to risk money. There was um, a sploco. Mm. A GMPC formed an arm which was going to now, anytime there's a block like this, where the Ghana has the 14 to 15 percent carried interest, the thinking in the previous administration was that let's form a sploco, which will be an offshoot of GMPC that can also participate in the block. So a sploco in this case, from what Imani is saying, could have taken another 15%. Mm. But what it means is that there is a cash call, and that cash call has to go through our budget, our consolidated money, the money that we have to use for hospitals, schools, education. Ghana government needs to find $150 million to go and risk. And if you go and you don't find anything, you have lost that money. So I don't encourage that. So we, it's better we stick to the carried interest and basically look at it going forward. Mm -hmm. But for what Imani is saying, I don't agree. I'll come back to you on, on the issue of uh, going forward and what this means to our economy. McDad, I'm sure you've also been following this matter quite yeah. uh, strongly. What's your own position on it? Well, I think I want to disagree uh, strongly with uh, my brother, my senior brother here. Mm -hmm. Because I think that uh, we don't have to just simply reduce GMPC to a collector of, uh, of money from uh, international oil companies. They must that participate? Have some, they must participate incrementally at some point. Mm. When you look at the agreement that uh, Iman was talking about, Esploco mm. uh, was supposed to take up 10% when uh, they did their data room uh, uh, farm out. They, they were farming down, actually. They were, not, they, they, they were holding on to 50% and then farming uh, down 40%, mm. which got local taking 38%. And then the uh, GMPC's s -Bloco was taking 10%, and for which government of Ghana in the 2016 budget made provisions for $47 million for them to take up that, 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 that uh, uh, participating interest. What happened was that because of the uh, eight loss ruling, the 69% of the block was approximately uh, under contention, so uh, they chose to hold on. 
until that was exhausted before they will make the payments. But eventually in 2017, when the ruling came, uh, ACA acquired the 10% back, mm. leaving Exploco with zero. Mm. And GMPC holding its uh, old 10%. Mind you, this is a and then Ford Trade holding initially held by HES. Yes. Mm. I mean, when you do, when you do uh, a data room, mm. you are, HES has done the exploration. They have mm. got the data. They want to uh, sell off some sticks in there. They hold 90%. GMPC holds 10%. And then they say, okay, now, here is the data we have. We, we have got our, our 2D, 3D data. Seismic data is here. Mm. It shows that the possibility of... Uh, uh, getting this amount of oil exists. Mm. If you look at the data and you are convinced, you can take up some percentage. Luke Oil came in, took 38%. Four Trade took uh, 2%. And then GMPC's 10% was still there. And the, 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 the incorporated subsidiary of GMPC, which is mm. the Exploco, GMPC Exploco, mm. was supposed to take up 10% of Hess Energy. But because of, uh, what, I don't know, uh, what went into into the scene with a change of government and what whatever happens, then now it emerges that Hess is still holding on to its 50%, when it should have been holding 40% if we have exercised that right. And then we woke up to the news that there has been a discovery after the seven wars that uh, Hess drilled, Hess drilled right. the two gas and the mm -hmm. five petroleum. Yeah. And when you say you have made extra, uh, extra discoveries, now you have uh, exploration uh, we have a prospecting license, mm. which lasts for seven years, mm. which we got from 2007 and ended in 18th eight, July 2013. Mm. So it means beyond that, you are still doing some work. Right. And when you discovered the oil, will, will that discovery be covered by the petroleum agreement or the exploration to license, which mm. was given to you between 2007 and 2013? Mm. Obviously, these are the questions Imani raised. Mm. And I think that they, they did not uh, present it as sacrosanct. Mm. They presented it as seeking further and more clarity right. from the people in the sector. And we are, we are grateful that the right to information bill has been passed. Some of these things are the things that we in civil society will have the opportunity of scrutinizing and policing the process so that it doesn't become uh, the work of some uh, uh, big men in some big room deciding on behalf of the people of Ghana mm. without uh, sometimes, you know, some T's may have to be crossed or some I's may have to be dotted. Mm. And we should, we should take some voices like Mr. Uh, Mr. Kojopoku here and us and Imani and IES and ASEP to be able to raise some questions. That is how we have come this far. Mm. So for me, I think that it is not uh, out of place for questions to be raised about the participating interest of GMPC. Yes, it is not just money that throwing away, it's a risk. And they are not acquiring 50% of the block, which will require them to be the majority investors. They, they are just carrying some 10%, a risk you invest where discoveries have been made and you, you, you finish your appraisal, you see commerciality big enough you cough in the money, whether you are getting mm. support from wh wherever, eventually you could make something or you could lose. Mm. That is how it's supposed to be. Mm. And that is how uh, uh, the companies we look up to abroad, the multinationals in, uh, in, in Brazil and that's how they began. You don't begin by going for the big kick. Mm. I mean, you are a small player. That is why also I think in the wisdom of uh, the people who chose to create Exploco, mm. made it uh, a, 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 a subsidiary of GMPC. Mm. So GMPC holds its 10 percent Exploco on its own, holds another 10% uh, uh, participating interest, and we can make some progress. So maybe... Could you, do you still hold for on to your for for some time. I will explain. Mm. Okay, let me explain a few bits about what he just said. Look, when you have a seven-year exploration um, PA, petroleum mm. agreement, which is for exploration period, mm. and you've made some discoveries, you can be given an extension. So clearly what happened in this case was that the petroleum agreement that existed, the company expired. Uh, but, but you, you can be extended all right so there was an extension given mm. okay within that extension is only when the discoveries then you now cannot go to a, you cannot go to a different negotiation for a developmental agreement so the develop, development and production agreement is different from exploration agreement so now that they are still doing appraisals on the existing uh, wells they are that done with the appraisals no, HES didn't do appraisals. HES only, that's why the, the, the volumetrics... No, ACA, ACA is done with the appraisals. No, what I'm saying is and that... And they have submitted a plan of development mm. for this. Of for course, the world yes, but, what, about, yeah. but what, what I'm saying is that you are saying that mm. you are asking questions about what are they no, still... Imani is asking Well, questions. Imani is asking questions about are these are they still in the PA which existed? And right. I'm trying to give clarity to that, that the petroleum agreement that existed was for exploration. P appraisals are still exploration. It's after you have done your appraisals and done, and you now have your developmental and production arrangement, then you now sign a developmental and production agreement. Mm. So whatever Ake is doing now is still under the old 
a care exploration you agreement. You see, in exploration, it, it, you have it, seven it, years. Mm. No, but it can be extended. There's nothing that says that the minister can extend it. It can be extended. They extend it all the time. So what I'm saying is that if a company has finished, has made discoveries, they exit, a new company comes in, it was extended. So I'm trying to give clarity to what you asked. Mm -hmm. Imani is saying that, was it done under the old exploration agreement of seven years? And right. I'm saying yes. Because the exploration agreement of seven years, the minister is given the right to extend it. So it was extended. There are only two types of agreements in upstream. It's either an exploration agreement or a developmental mm -hmm. and production agreement. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing appraisal, it is under the exploration, exploration agreement. Mm -hmm. So let's put that to rest. Mm -hmm. Look, nobody has the single thought on what should happen. The game of the, the name of the game is that you either risk money to make money. Private companies can risk money to make money. As a country, we have to ask ourselves, are we prepared to let the government of Ghana, through a subsidiary, which mm. is Esploco, mm. which is still owned 100% by Ghana, of Ghana, to be risking Ghanaians' limited resources? Mm. In the past, we had the issue of the uh, uh, GMPC, GMPC, GMPC mm. risking buying rigs and mm. all that. And we know what happened. And we know what happened. Mm. So the question is, Nobody is saying that the extra percentages cannot be acquired. But the explanation that I am bringing to the fore, and he's confirmed it, mm. that if you seek to take more, it comes with a risk. Unlike, so you separate the conversation. Mm. Let's not make it look like we could have gotten 30 and we took 14. Mm. It's not the same. The 14 is given to you as a government. You are carried and you don't pay anything. Right. If you seek to take more, mm. it comes with a risk. So when Imani lump it like that that oh we could have taken this and made such amount of money mm -hmm. no it's not what you could have made comes with a risk so that is explanation i want to give right that's fair so uh we're told there's a second you want to say something before yes mm -hmm. I, I, I wanted to make the the, mm -hmm. the the point that where you have an interest i mean 35 percent of zero is zero so where you 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 risk and make the investments and you make returns for example if uh Esploco had the 10% in this has energy. What will have been the stake of GMPC Esploco in this uh, new discovery? These but, are but you would have spent, see. You would have spent, no, but no, you no, have no, made hold, money. Hold on, no, hold on. The, the, so the, the, the argument, the, 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 the let me explain. Is, let me explain. Are you before, willing as a country to no, take before, that risk? Before they mm. made the discovery, mm. before they did appraisal, mm. there, was, there was a work program. Let's say the work program is 100 million. Mm. If you have 10%, it means what? It's $10 million. Right. You have to cough up $10 million towards that work program before when the results of the $1 billion that we are talking about and comes so up. What That's be when the, you enjoy so, so what, country, what then will be the problem in Ghana? Mm. Seeing, because before, before Hess Energy handed over the well mm. to, to, to Aka, the commerciality appraisal of the so well was, the, the was positive. Over to GMPC to no, Hess uh, held 90%. Right. They did their data room farm down mm -hmm. and then gave out 38 to Luke Oil mm -hmm. at 2% uh, to four trade. Okay. That is when Exploco of GMPC was supposed to take 10%. Okay. But it didn't happen. And I've made reference to the fact that the 2016 budget had $47 million for that uh, uh, participating interest but the question so, is uh, so as to the argument as to the argument he will make uh -huh. that it it, it, that it will not make economic sense for the government of ghana to make that investment mm. knowing that the seismic data you extracted was positive no but do because we you, as, you, you, as you, you 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 think aka energy will acquire for 100 million dollars that well if the data room they they, they, they assessed was not positive. So are we saying so that we must not from data they are private they are private mm. companies that mm. have faced difficulties and collapsed mm. I am not one of the people who believe that the state must just uh, uh, keep holding on to taking royalties from our oil uh, and gas sector. So, so yes, yes, that, yes, so we have had examples, okay, but 10%, 10%, uh, uh, hold on guys, hold on guys, 10% uh, of 100% for GMPC uh, we'll, we'll explosion. come back to it's this. Okay. Um, let's it's go okay. to Parliament. The Chief Executive Officer of the Petroleum Commission, Egbert Fable Jr., uh, has been speaking about this uh, latest deal. Uh, he was in Parliament today. Let's hear what he had to say, and then we'll come back in studio to uh, tie up the loose ends. or let's say make it difficult for expatriates to come in or we grow Ghanaians alongside. What we've also done is that lately, if you may have heard, uh, one of the initiatives of His Excellency the President is the Accelerated Oil and Gas Capacity Program, where the Petroleum Commission has been tasked to ensure that Ghanaians are trained to take up such roles in the upstream space. We've sourced 4.5 million United States dollars from Aka Energy 
And indeed, that program is going to be rolled out. Over a thousand plus Ghanaians are going to be trained to be unleashed onto the industry. So I just want to assure you that the Petroleum Commission is doing all that is necessary on a daily basis to ensure that Ghanaians take their rightful places in the upstream oil space. The accelerated oil and gas capacity program has just been operationalized because we just got the necessary funding. But with respect to initiatives like the an internship program known as GASIP and also the database, last year at least over 120 Ghanaians were placed in such roles. Chief Executive Officer of the Petroleum Commission, the Acting Chief Executive Officer, Egbert Fable Jr., uh, addressing Parliament on this ACA deal and uh, what they intend to do for the people of this country. Uh, could you, so, look, so we're told that this uh, will give us uh, in excess of, uh, okay, have a, a million barrels of crude oil a day. Uh, what does this mean for, for Ghana in the economy? Well, it means that um, we are inching closer to be recognized as a serious company when mm. it comes to oil and as a serious country right. when it comes to oil and gas. Mm. It also means that we would now have a lot of companies um, coming in to explore um, for more. I remember as far back as 2002 when we first went to Houston for a conference and we had a card gas up oil exploration company from Ghana. Mm. People look at you and thinking, Ghana, do you guys have oil? That's 2002. Now it's different. People mm. go to Houston and go to all these conferences and they're excited to be there because Ghana is known. Mm. So these big discoveries is, is welcome. Mm. You understand? It will put us. But for me, my concern is not whether Ghanaian money should be put into risking. For I think the petroleum We've work gone program. Back to the issue. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm the work program. Mm. And I always decide. The, the work program mm. that is to be done. Mm. We should concentrate more and sit with the oil companies on the work program mm. because these discoveries have a lifespan. Mm. You realize that it's seven to ten years on most wells. Right. So if they front load the expenditure for the work program, mm. which is about let's say two billion or three billion, because maybe one point five is for an FPSO, and this is for that. You realize that we need to pay off all those money that has been borrowed mm. before a proper sharing equation is done. Right. So the most important thing is not government to get excited about the volumetrics that we've gotten, mm. but to look at the expenditure, the front end expenditure. What goes into it. What goes into mm. it and basically streamline mm. because the quicker we are able to pay off some of these loans that we contract, the better for us to be able to, as Ghanaians, get better benefits. Mm. Well, we can discover billions of oils uh, a day mm. in this country. Mm. But when the laws we have made to govern our exploration, our, uh, whatever, uh, even the management of revenue mm. is not respected by the people who are in tax, uh, entrusted with the duty to manage the resources, it will come to naught. We will come and discuss the discovery of oil and we will go to conferences in whichever part of the country and be recognized as a player. But the people for whom the resources were discovered will continue to live in misery because we don't uh, make loss. If we make loss and say we have uh, this duration and people, uh, for whatever reason, whatever interests are at stake, uh, end up uh, downplaying or watering down the, 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 the role of the country in, in the whole transaction, it raises a lot of questions. And I think I, I agree fully with Imani. If in the next 20 years we are drilling a million barrels a day, and we have a GMPC that has reduced to a beggar in a transaction that takes only the, the share that they have because of uh, they being a Ghanaian company, then we are not serious as a, as a, as a country. Mm. Yes, we, we may have had the examples of, of the drill ships and the Chachu's uh, era with the acquisitions they made that were not productive, but times have changed. We have, if we are a country that picks lessons from the past, we should be able to uh, see GMPC playing roles. That Sinopec, for example, is, is, is playing in some, uh, uh, in the context of our sub-region mm -hmm. and all. We can't beat our chest and, and say we want to be uh, petroleum hub and those fanciful words the politicians mm -hmm. throw about. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to empowering GMPC, when it comes to uh, establishing a clear path of growth, for GMPC to, to, to be able to not only just go collect royalties, but to be able to participate with a minimum level of risk, then we, 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 we create excuses for it. Mm. It cannot but work. Kujo, this that is still far less than what Nigeria is producing in a day. I mean, beyond just exporting in its raw form, what can we do as a country? Well, the petroleum hub, which has been talked of in the Western region, mm. is one step. Some of us are advocating for stopping of the FPSO developmental plan. Why so? Because FPSOs does not um, help us develop 
the industry we want. What FP also does is that it basically sits right next to where the well is, takes the oil and ships it out. What we should do is do an ocean floor study, do pipelines of all the wells and pipe it onto a storage onshore. When you have that, then you have a terminal where ships will come and load the crude off. You can have a refinery that can now sit behind or close to this storage facility and pipe crude oil to it. From the refinery, you can have petrochemical industries come up. And we've talked. And how soon do you see this refinery coming up? Well, I don't know about the refinery, mm. but my point is the first step is to have the piping of our crude to the shore. Mm. When you do that, you see, we keep talking about the refinery, refinery, but the, the most important things have not been done. Even the ocean floor studies have not been done. So it takes well, a, lo a long... It, it's a process. Mm. And you see, it will get to a time. If we don't make such big discoveries and we make smaller discoveries, it will be difficult to develop it because then you now have to look at tying that in into existing FPSOs because you remember there's Jubilee 1 and Jubilee 2. Mm. Jubilee 1 has an FPSO. When they found Jubilee 2, they didn't have enough volumetrics in Jubilee 2, so they tied it in into Jubilee 1 FPSO. Mm. There will be a time when you do not make enough discovery for a well to be able to now go a full-blown developmental um, arrangement like having an FPSO mm. that costs 1.5 billion or whatever. But if we're able to tie in all these small small wells into one pipeline then smaller wells can also be tied in into the storage that we have onshore mm. when you're able to do that then the refinery conversation can come after mm. Peter, let me take your own mm. uh, thoughts on that and then we'll move on to uh, ghana gas uh, supplying gas to vra well clearly i i, I agree with him about this uh, fpsolization of our industry you think it's it's, uh, it's an own starter i think it's it's capital intensive mm. And the returns have not been as uh, as quick as it should, it should mm. be. And in some cases, like you referred to, our, it was something that IES was looking at right. how you you make discoveries and where you are not able to uh, get FPSOs <laughs> to take over. You have to pipe it all the, all, 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 all the way. And where you have commerciality questions, you are not very certain about the the. the the level of investment that will be needed you may waste money to do piping that you may not get the level of uh, resources that you, you you anticipate so well i've also followed the discussion on this petroleum hub thing mm -hmm. i mean for me i see it as simply one of the the talks of the politicians until we see clear lines towards it the, the question of TOR's existence has not been addressed whether they are going to bring in a private equity into TOR, whether government is going to guarantee TOR to get stock. We are just uh, we have just uh, pushed aside. The, no, but like like Kujo is saying, there are processes we need to go through before we have to set up a refinery. There are a lot of processes mm. uh, indeed, but if you have not addressed your premier refinery, the the, the number Tell one, our refinery. It, it is currently uh, facing some challenges mm. with uh, feed stock, mm. and this is because it has bad books. So as to whether government is guaranteeing for them to get free stock from Equatorial Guinea or from Nigeria, or they are getting them uh, private capital with TOS uh, infrastructure, they are CDU and RFCC as equity mm. for them to be able to, to, to be on their feet. Or they are just, uh, as the, the former energy minister said, they were making it a tank, a tank farm. Mm. These are ideas that have been floated by various players within the energy sector in this government mm. and you don't see policy coherence Kojo, what would it. it mean to have a well-stationed a well-functioning refinery um liquidity money um you see there's a lot of talk and less action and mm. you need the actions before anybody can be very sure of what's going to happen. Like the instance of Tor, as my brother have mentioned, there are various ways that Tor can be made to function. The main decision lies with the shareholder, which is government. And government has to make a very decisive decision on what they want to do. Mm. I mean, most people think that Tor is to do with feedstock. It's not about feedstock. Feedstock is about you have to pay for it. We have our own crude, which GMPC manages. GMPC can give our crude to Tor. The only difference is that in 30 days, somebody has to put the money in the account which the government, has, the parliament have said that, look, if our crude is sold in 30 days, they have to go into this account. Mm. So uh, the issue of stock is not the problem. The free stock is there. GMPC can give it. Nigeria can give it. Equatorial Guinea can give it. But within 30 days, somebody has to pay for it. Mm. And those are the decisions that needs to be made by the majority shareholder, which mm. is government. All right. Mm. Let's quickly talk about the uh, Ghana gas um, 
having began to supply gas to VRA. Good news for us? Yeah, very good news. Mm -hmm. I think as the media don't talk a lot about when there are good news. I think mm -hmm. mostly it's when there's crisis and everybody comes to talk. Mm -hmm. um, had some tough times in the month of March. Um, some of us are very hopeful that in April, now that the reverse flow is done, um, companies that are in Tema can now get the needed gas to power. Um, the liquidity problem still exists, but it's, got, it's getting better. You know, so there are challenges in the system, but I don't think that Ghanaians should be rest assured that we've basically moved away from the challenges in March. There are some problems here and there. You have a few outages every now and then, but I think we've come out of the woods. Mm. Migdal, exciting times for us. Yes, the meaning of all of this for any average Ghanaian mm. uh, is that, uh, that you should be able to have stable electricity. Uh, uh, the average Ghanaian will not uh, care whether the gas came from the West Africa pa gas pipeline or it came from Jubilee or 10. What uh, the average Ghanaian wants to see is that when he puts on his light, it is on. And this is a positive development. And it's one of the things that uh, I, I, I commend TV3 often for. You have uh, specialized uh, journalists who are, are more into a particular field mm. and they immerse themselves in it. Mm. But largely because the media landscape is more of yes, general news reporting, you don't get the specificity that re mm. is required when some of these uh, news come up. So I think it's a positive development and like as Senior Kujupuku said, we've not come out of the woods yet. We at IES are not uh, prophets of doom. Uh, that's, uh, do not doom so. Prophets of doom, we are not. Mm. Uh, we have seen uh, time th instances where Mr. Uh, the Energy Ministry, whether it is Mr. Mewo, or Deputy in Charge of Power, mm. have come to make assurances uh, when, when uh, these news are not out yet. And those assurances have been empty. Instead of their assurances, it's such news that should be making the airwaves. So mm. when Ghanaians are informed that uh, this amount of gas has moved from Ghana gas to yeah. VRA, mm. it means something instead mm. of the uh, minister or his deputy organizing meet the presses and clapping for them for themselves for solving Dumso and the challenges in the energy sector when uh, Ghanaians will sleep and wake up in that All right, place. okay. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for your time. Thanks for having uh, you in the studio. Um, Kojo Poku is an energy analyst. McDad is with the Institute of Energy Security. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for your time. Uh, we'll take a short break. When we return, I'll tell you about this young Ghanaian shoemaker whose passion to make shoes uh, stems from his love to care for the needy. We'll take a short break. We'll return with that uh, on our mover segment for tonight. His mother was passionate about charity and touching lives. Unfortunately, she didn't live too long to touch more lives. This was the starting point for the Warm Dear Feet shoe brand. I visited the production house for the full story. The whole intention is to make and sell shoes and then use the proceeds to impact society. That's, that's what drove Warm Dear Feet. 33-year-old Noel Nichuga needed to raise money to continue his mother's charitable works whilst meeting demands in the shoe and fashion supply chain. As usual, financial challenges are prominent. They have become the main bane of many businesses in Ghana, especially the startups. As expected, the starting point of every business is very, very difficult. We have to fall on families, we have to fall on friends, we have, we have, we have to fall on even some uh, financial institutions for loans and so on. As we speak, we are still repaying some of the loans, except that things are looking positive for us. And I must say that very soon, all of these debts will be off, and then we'll be able to focus more attention on our social entrepreneurship. Again, another challenge is having to do with high impost duties. With a fluctuating currency, the price for the soles for the shoes is not stable on the market and that affects the business. The import duties are so huge that there seems to be no strategy or whatsoever for startup businesses. And it's killing us. It, it makes our prices look outrageous to some people, to so many people. Um, a lot of people would have to see the quality before they feel okay, the quality matches the sort of price. Otherwise, on the face value, people don't want to do business with you. But the line to succeed had been drawn and there was no turning back. 
warm their feet began production and the first batch of desert shoes were produced. From a business that started with making only 14 pairs of shoes, the brand is now able to produce over 400 or more in a month depending on the demand. He's not only producing desert shoes, but has also introduced a new line of quality leather sandals for men and children. This is in line with the charitable aspect of their project. Our charity has focused on the education sector. This year, for example, we are going to donate about 100 shoes to lots of communities where we have brilliant but needy children, children school, of school going ages who cannot afford uh, a pair to wear. So we are going to, that's our major project for 2019. For him, the SME sector in Ghana has a lot of potential and must be supported with adequate funds. The government ought to deliberately create a strategy that seeks to empower local industries, that seeks to empower startup businesses like us. So for example, if you have some sort of waiver for startup businesses, that should be a plus for us. We would have a lot of uh, things going on well for us if we can save some more. Until the needed support is received, determination and willpower will always be key. At some point, it was difficult, but I, I am I'm someone who's been trained to resist some of these uh, tough times. For me, giving up is, is just too late. I mean, I've, got, I've gone too far to give up on anything it was that I was doing. So, yes, those tendencies will come up, but I have resisted them and we have moved the brand to where we are now. Noel encouraged young entrepreneurs to be innovative and take advantage of the various social media avenues to exhibit their products. This is what he has for upcoming entrepreneurs. If I was a loner on this journey, it would have been so difficult. So I would advise that they discuss ideas with people they trust. They should be willing to take on partnership. Sometimes people are so reluctant to entertain the idea of partnership because of the share of profit. You know, and I always say that it is better if you get 50% of 100,000 Ghana cities. It is better than getting 100% of 10,000 Ghana cities, right? So once you, are, you have a joint force, there are brilliant ideas that will come on board. You can dwell on to make uh, greater things. The SME sector is a big one that has space for everyone to operate. The One Beer Feet brand has come to stay and it is ready to bridge that gap in the shoe supply chain for the mover segment on business focus on TV3, Grace Hamwa Asari, Accra. Thank you very much, Grace Hamwa Asari, for that one on the mover segment this week. You're still watching Business Focus, your most authoritative business and economic analysis program live here on TV3. We'll take a short break. When we return, we'll do the very latest analysis on the stock market as well as the commodities market. Winslow Sakifu will join me for some analysis on this. Welcome back to Business Focus, your most authoritative business and economic analysis program live here on TV3. Let's do some stock market analysis. Winslow Sakifu is with First, uh, First Bank Financial Services. Winslow, uh, last week you told us about an unusual trade-off, or if you like sell-off uh, in shares. I don't know if that has changed uh, today. It hasn't changed. We are still witnessing more sell-off. But okay. this time it's related to the performance of the equities themselves. So we had uh, ADB end of year, and the performance wasn't that good. There was a sharp decline. Oh, what accounted for that? It was mainly on the back of uh, non-performing loans, and they didn't really do a lot of lending in last year. You know, most of the banks were having a wait-and-see attitude, right. and it was also due to the minimum capital issue. So. Most of them didn't do much business. Like and, and that impacted on their stock market performance? Yes, and uh, this is one of the few times that you could see uh, non-performance from the company itself being reflected in the stock, stock prices. Market, yes. right. So mm -hmm. there is some kind of efficiency in there. But we've also seen some of the big banks also doing well. So it's more mixed now. The smaller ones are not doing so well the big ones are leveraging on their size. Mm. So what are we to expect uh, in the coming week? Uh, it's difficult to know when the bottom would happen, but 
it's likely this second quarter we won't see much significant positive performance on the market. Maybe in the third quarter when we see fed first quarter results. I think uh, business. So, what would be your advice to investors at this time? Local investors. Local investors is good to get in now because uh, the stock prices are very low, so you get them very cheap and. Any upside would uh, give you significant return. Mm, I see. Interesting. Let's talk about the commodities market now. Let's start off with gold. Uh, what's uh, it looking like? Gold uh, inched up very slightly, and mm. it was uh, because of demand from India. You know, they use a lot of gold in mm. their weddings right. and all that. Mm. And the rupee strengthened a bit, so they took advantage to buy more gold. But that didn't push the price up very much because... In China, the demand wasn't that much. Mm. China is one of the highest domestic consumers. So for gold, there was a slight increase. What we saw a significant move is crude prices. You know, now we are in the 70 zone, and it looks like even high U.S. stockpile didn't bring the price down because there was a high demand. Mm. OPEC has indicated that they would increase production in June, but... June is a bit far off, so mm. we'll see prices still going up gradually. Mm. For cocoa, cocoa, uh, I think rain pattern in the cocoa growing areas have been very good, so we expect the yield to increase, and that is bringing the price down. Mm. Right. Okay, thank you very much, Winslow, for your time, and uh, hopefully next, uh, next week uh, we'll see you for some more analysis, and we'll find out particularly how the stock market is faring. Uh, thanks also for watching. This has been Business Focus, your most authoritative business and economic analysis program live here on TV3. Uh, God willing, same time next week, we'll be here again with another edition of your show. Uh, there's a repeat on Thursday. Um, uh, we'll stand by now for the news at 7 with Alfred and Natalie. Thanks very much for watching. Thank you.